Hi everyone, how are you guys doing today? Today is Friday? Thursday? Friday? You know what? I'm not really sure. This week has been this big giant blur. But I think it's Friday. <laughs> how about we go with that and you guys can correct me later. <laughs> Oh, anyway, I just want to first tell you guys, I appreciate your prayer so very much for my sister-in-law. Um, right now, it's heartbreaking the um, how she, she is, but I am praying and it's just going to be, it's going to be a slow recovery process, but we're praying that it's, God speeds it up. Uh, my sister-in-law, her name is Lisa. She is the most beautiful uh, sweetest most fun and smart person I mean she's got this amazing sense of humor she's extremely intelligent she's very easygoing um, just a, a wonderful wonderful person and her, her husband and I always talked about how um, lucky her and my husband were there's brother and sister of course because they have such good genes and they're so healthy and uh, me and her husband John seem to be falling apart <laughs> But, so we were just like, oh my gosh, they just got good genes. Well, this past year between my husband being diagnosed with the very severe heart condition he has and then this happening to Lisa, which was last Monday, um, she had an aneurysm, a very, very large one that burst in her brain. Uh, had no clue she even had it, none whatsoever. Her husband, John, is a nurse and he works in a neurological um department at the hospital I think that he, he's in so he's very very familiar with all the stuff that goes on with the brain and everything and and he was running late for work which was a God thing what a blessing because if he had not been there she would have died he was running a little bit late and they were standing in the bedroom talking and he said it's like a bullet hit her head she just went she just went down and they're hoping she improves a little bit day by day. It caused a, a stroke and a, a, I think a stroke with an aneurysm and a stroke with a blood clot from your heart or, or lungs or whatever is very different. Um, it still affects the brain and everything. What happens, he explained this to us yesterday, what happens is when our brain, even though we have blood throwing, flowing through it in certain chambers, it's not surrounded in blood. So whenever, if, if an aneurysm burst, it starts bleeding on the brain and wherever that blood touches on your brain, your brain dies. And luckily, you know, we can relearn things, but that's, that is what is so devastating with a stroke is that when you do get that blood on the brain, it destroys whatever part of the brain that the blood touches. So hers was a very large one. So far, you know, because this just happened Monday, so we're not sure to the extent uh, of the, you know, what the extent of the damage is going to be. It's just going to be a process. Uh, they said she will be in the hospital for at least two weeks if all goes well. Um, they were concerned yesterday. We drove up to where they live yesterday, which is Olympia, Washington, and, and we live... Um, across the river in Oregon so they live about an hour and a half from us and so we drove up there yesterday and what they were concerned with then is that she was uh, had a lot of fluid surrounding her brain it wasn't draining itself so if it did if it doesn't start and I haven't heard anything this morning but if it doesn't start draining itself they will have to go in and put in a little tube in her brain to make it drain so that will be the second brain operation she's had because of this. So we're just praying that doesn't happen. And, it, you know, Mark's family, his mom has, has Alzheimer's. Um, his dad is 84 and he's starting um, to diminish a bit, you know, with memory and, and comprehension and, and st stuff like that. And my husband, he has a lot of issues with that too. Uh, we don't know if it's his medication or his doctor said it could possibly be uh, dementia caused by his diabetes, but he cannot remember things. And he has a hard time comprehending things. I have to sit and explain things to him over and over and over again. 
So you can imagine, these are the three people that my life consists of. And so I'm trying to help them all as much as I possibly can understand what's going on. Um, I think it's, it's almost a blessing that uh, his parents don't completely understand the severity of the situation because they would be that much more upset. But when I first walked in to see her, I was expecting to see her somewhat non-responsive. So I would, had prepared myself for that. But when we walked in, she was very responsive, talking, hey, hey. But as things developed and John and I were kind of talking across because my in-laws weren't understanding what's going on and neither was my husband. But it was very, very obvious that something wasn't right. She did not know uh, what day it was. She didn't know her birthday. She didn't know... Um, she seemed to recognize us pretty well, but she didn't know what was going on at all. She thought she was at work, and she kept wanting to know why, why was everyone here and, and everything. And John, her husband, actually called because she works. She's a scheduler. She does what I used to do at the hospital. She schedules uh, operations for the doctor she works for. He's a surgeon. And um, he actually came down to talk to her to explain to her that work was fine, that, you know, she was okay she was there and she wasn't at work and that everything was covered so she just needed to stop worrying but for me i i don't know why but it kind of hit me harder than it did the rest of them or, or maybe i just i don't know but i had to leave the room for a moment because i started crying and i did not want her to see me cry it's just not um to see lisa like that who is such a wonderful vibrant person and it was just hard. I was able to gather myself pretty quickly, but it was hard for a moment. So we prayed with her before we left, of course. And I'm, uh, she's the first thing on my heart this morning when I got up. So your continued prayers for her complete healing would be very much appreciated. And in the meantime, this is one of my devotions from this morning I wanted to share with you guys because it kind of speaks to, to my situation and it certainly, I'm, I'm sure speaks to a lot of you ladies' situation. Um, this is out of my Everyday Matters Life Bible for Women. And the verses are um, 2 Samuel 47, verses 40. Well, no. Okay, excuse me. 2 Samuel 22. That's what it is. 22, verses 47 through 51. You'll have to excuse me. Okay, and it says... The Lord lives. Praise to my rock. May God, the rock of my salvation, be exalted. He is the God who pays back those who harm me. He brings down the nations under me and delivers me from my enemies. You hold me safe beyond the reach of my enemies. You save me from violent opponents. For this, O Lord, I will praise you among the nations. I will sing praises to your name. You give great victories to your king. You show unfailing love to your anointed, to David and all his descendants forever. And this is the devotion that goes along with it. And it's about gratitude. How can I make practicing gratitude a lifestyle? The spiritual di discipline of gratitude is really about a change of heart. For me, it began as I asked myself what I really wanted to become in life. Who did I want to be? I realized I didn't want to be a, a whiner. Instead, I wanted to be excuse me, I wanted to be a contented, life-giving person. So I began to take bad attitudes captive and say, thank you, God. I made the decision to acknowledge God's presence and worship Him. Picture your heart and soul like a garden. Whatever you sow, water, fertilize, and care for, that's what will grow. Gratitude and joy are what I want to grow. So those are the things I intentionally care for and cultivate. I'm clear of Excuse me. I'm clear about planting the seeds, plucking the weeds, and intentionally guarding my heart against those things that kill my joy and gratefulness. It's hard work, but it bears the fruit of joy. I have to daily, I have two daily habits that plant the seeds of gratitude in my life. I don't get out of bed until I've told God what I'm grateful for, and every night I close my don't close my eyes until I thank God for what He's done that day. Gratitude doesn't just happen. We need a plan. We need to form purpo purposeful habits. It takes constant 
vigilance. And that's why it's called the discipline of gratitude. Is that not so, so good? You know, it doesn't matter. You know, yes, this is David that wrote this about all the situations that he went through. But God wants us to apply this to our lives because he does save us. He does protect us. He, he does bring down the enemy of our souls. And the thing about it is we may not see that. You know, right now, Lisa is very much unaware of what's going on around her. She's very much unaware of where she's at, what's going on. She doesn't see things clearly for what they are. But what's going on is there's a lot of people in the background taking care of her, watching over her, you know, ready to, to jump in there if there's any sign of trouble whatsoever and, and you know, help her and protect her. And then, of course, there's her family who's in the back praying for her and many friends who are praying for her. But she doesn't see that. We're the same way. We may be just focused on our circumstance and don't see all the stuff that's going on in the background, all the things that God's doing to bring this situation under His control, to bring out good for us and glory for Him, to bring us through to a, a greater purpose than we've ever known. We may not see that, but what we have to do is trust that that's what's going on because that's what His Word tells us. That's what He has promised us. So... No matter what, don't take your eyes off of God. Don't, don't, don't. He is there. You may not see exactly what He is doing for whatever reason. He may not choose to reveal that to you right now. But you need to trust and believe that He's working. And He's working things out for your good. And He's there to jump in whenever something starts to go wrong. And He's there to, to squash our enemies when, when the enemy comes against us. We have to believe that and we have to trust in that. I've been through a lot in my life. And I've never seen a situation that did not come out for, for good. Sometimes they were painful things that happened. But God is still good. And He is going to ultimately one day make everything beautiful in you again for all of us. But in the meantime, He is watching over us. He is protecting us. He has our back and He goes before us to prepare our path. So I hope that helps you ladies today because it certainly has helped me. What a blessing it has been. What a blessing you are to me. Uh, Shereen McGinnis was talking this morning about the blessing of friends, whether you've ever met them in person or not, and how so many of us have become such good friends even though it's through videos and, you know, scripture writing uh, pages on Facebook, we have become each other's friends. We're blessings. God has given us to each other to help each other and pray for each other through the difficult situations of our lives. And that is just such a wonderful thing to have. So I pray blessings on you ladies today and I pray that you will believe and understand that God is working in your circumstance or circumstances. No matter what it looks like right now, your Father in Heaven has it under control and He has you in the palm of His hand. So rest there. Okay ladies, I love you so much. This wasn't a very funny, uplifting kind of video, but I pray it was spiritually uplifting to you. And I will see you again soon. Thank you, thank you.